Hey, welcome to Rabbit and Blue Radio with the Skeleton Crew. This is the 12 days of Friday to the 13th. I'm your host, Alex, joined as always by Michael J. and our special guest host, Dan Chase. Whose idea was it to uh, start our return on Harbid with a Friday 13 special in which we give an in-depth look at each Friday 13th movie? I never said in-depth look. I just said a look into, didn't I? Or did I ever? Did I say in-depth? I don't remember. You said that we should do a special where we... We, we do a real breakdown of every movie, and for some right. stupid reason, I said, that's a great idea. It is. Um, you know, s- since this is not technically a Friday 13th, is this episode necessary? Uh, yeah, it is. Because it is a Friday the 13th. It's called Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. So Friday is in the title. Okay. I think it's necessary. I think we, we owe it a little something, but uh, that's about it. Just a little. Just a nod. Mm-hmm. Well, I, just yeah, wanna... I don't know now why you guys hate this, because I oh, like it. God. I just want to let everyone know, if you look down to the bottom right of your screen and you see that yeah. the video is 10 minutes or less, do not be surprised. Yeah, exactly. Because I would never devote more than 10 seconds talking about this movie had I not been stuck hosting a special <laughs> beyond Jason Takes Manhattan. I, you know, uh... Let's face it, we're doing this one just so we can do the other ones. Yeah. I said it. Right. Yeah. I I almost just want to sit here and let you two talk amongst yourselves. What do you, What do you not like about the movie? I I don't get it. Everything. I yeah, didn't but... like anything about this movie at all. Just the fact that they blew him up in the beginning. Okay, yeah, he's traveling through other people's body. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. And let's face it, you know that aspect of it. It's whatever. It's you know it can be perceived whatever way. Like oh, that's cool. He's unstoppable. You know nothing can kill him. Even blowing him up. I just hated this movie. I hated everything about it. And oh, I, I loved I, the Steven character. I thought he was great. And Creighton Duke, don't even get me started. I was like, he is the black incarnation of Tommy Jarvis. He was, uh, he, okay, if there was one bright spot, it would probably be him in that movie. I'd agree with that, Mike. Right. Probably about it. <laughs> we, we, we have to start off under categories. What the F moments. Okay, now talk about the movie. <laughs> exactly, dude. Oh man, I I, I can't say anything. You, you try, Mike. I I got nothing, bro. How about when Stephen got his fingers broken, like one by one? He was like, "You want that information? You're gonna have to pay." Yeah, and then at the end of the movie, he's fist fighting people, and it looks like everything's fine with his hands. Yeah. Well, because they probably healed over the course of of the. Hmm. You know, he's had a vor. He's been inside a Voorhees, so yep. maybe you know. Is it ten minutes yet? Transferred. <laughs> are we at, are we at Jason X yet? Okay, well let's talk, let's have some redeeming quality to this episode. Okay, Ad Dumb Marcus says the reason that Ad he, dumb. yeah, A D U M B. He ah. said the reason that Jason was barely in this movie is because he wanted us to miss Jason, and then when we get him back at the end of the movie, it's like a prize. Well, Adam, let me explain something to you. When, when I want to miss Jason, I don't watch any Friday 13th movies for like a year or two. Exactly. There you go. When I want to see him, I watch one of the movies. The prize is putting Jason, a Jason movie in and seeing him after not watching him for one or two years. If I didn't want to see him, I wouldn't watch a movie about him. You idiot. I, I agree with Adam Marcus, as you say, or Adam Marcus is his real name. Of course. I, I agree that, you know, because I did miss Jason. And by the time he did appear at the end, I was like, wow, he's back. Yeah, I missed him too from 1989 to 93. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I didn't need to miss him while I'm there to watch him. Yeah. I don't understand the concept. I get it, but it's not. It's, it, it's right. stupid, though. It's stupid. Very stupid. Yeah, and I know they were trying to kill him. This is the final Friday. Well, supposedly it was, but you know what? They tried that in four. Remember? And they, and they they've learned from it. They said, okay, this is a cash cow. Not only is it a cash cow, but the fans love it. Well, I guess that is that does mean it's a cash cow. But the fans love it. They'll always go to see these movies. They'll always be an audience for them. But when they took that 
that that concept of Jason and and like I said, blew him up. And then the guy was sitting there eating hearts and stuff. It's like, how is this a Friday the Thirteenth movie? Like you said, Alex, I get it, I understand. I'm just not along for the ride. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's that. good. Yeah, just because I can ex- just because I can understand what you're doing right. doesn't mean it's good. Come on, you can't tell right. me that you don't like that kill with Debbie in the tent when you know he goes in bareback because they're going at it. Yeah, that was good. You know. Tosses the condom aside. I know you you would approve of that most definitely. I get it. Absolutely. Um, and then when you know the spike goes through, and basically, if you watch the unrated cut, you see her like split in half. That is an unrated cut to this movie. Yes, there is. Good lord. You don't have it. It runs two minutes longer. Yeah, that that was an awesome kill. I agree. But it could have been thrown into some other Jason movie, and that would be better. Yeah. Like like part eight. Yeah, you uh, would have loved yeah. it. In part well, there was no camping in Part Eight, but yeah, I guess so. See, that's what Part Eight was missing. Then there should have been camping. They should have camped on the boat. Mike, we spent an hour on Part Eight. Let's move on. I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say why that would be why Part Eight is, you know, worse than this film. Uh, it, 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 that, now that's. See, I don't want to go more than ten minutes. Okay, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Let's find some redeeming qualities. Before the FBI showed up, did you get any nostalgic feeling when Jason was chasing that chick in the woods? And I all totally that? did. You know what? I'll give him this too. The way they killed him and everything. It's almost like it's the first time in the whole series. You know, we talked about the cops. You know, being not on top of their game. This is the first time that they've really addressed it in that sense, where you know the community as a whole or whoever said, "Listen, we got to stop this motherfucker." And I'll give them that. That was the redeeming quality of it. Now, from that point on, I think it sucked. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that point. That point was great when they killed them. It was almost like, "Holy shit, where are they going to go from here?" And exactly. then we saw where they went from there, and yeah. The worm keeping Jason alive. Now, this is one of those. This is one of those Michael Myers moments where you say, <clears throat> okay, so what you're telling me is in part one where Michael was going after Lori and in part two in the hospital, he was acting off of Thorn yeah. and the cult, oh, yeah. the cult, yeah, the cult was telling him to do that stuff. Now, Dr. Wynn, yep. Yeah. yeah, right. So basically Jason now in part two when he was standing on the chair waiting to stab Ginny with the pitchfork, he, the worm was inside of him and that's what was keeping him alive. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I mean, exactly, dude, exactly. How can you say and that, Mike? Do you realize? Do you realize this is blasphemy? No, because the worm, in in that was what, dude. That's what gave him life. When it shocked, when the lightning struck him in six, it shocked the worm back to life. Mike, Thus, but the reanimating the bong smoking worm in Freddy vs. Jason was better than this worm. You know what? The bong smoking worm in Freddy vs. Jason was probably just a reincarnation of the Jason goes to hell worm. You think so? Of course. Why are you listening to him, Dan? Listen, <laughs> Mike Mike will buy into anything if you slap a label on on top of it. You know, well, you, you could put out the biggest piece of shit, but if you put Halloween in the title, Mike will put it in his DVD, his Blu-ray collection. Obviously, yeah, I will. Uh, like you're you're not a purist. Let's just say let's just say some sick twisted millionaire made a new Halloween. He bought the rights. He just wanted to totally piss everybody off. And he made a Halloween movie where Michael Myers loves to have sex with little boys. And yeah. and the reason he goes after these girls is so he can kill them and get to the boys. And then he said that that's the reason Michael went after Lori so he can get to Tommy. He went after this one so he can get to this one, this one, that one. Mike would say, oh, okay, so that's why he went after them, and he would buy into it. It's a genius explanation if you look at it that way. Alex, besides the little boys part, that basically just happened with Halloween with Michael Bay, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know me, I'm, I'm all over the map when it comes to this stuff. I just remember going to the, to the theater on August 13th, 1993, and watching this movie, and Loving it. And at the end of the film, when you see the Freddy glove come out of the, the yeah. earth to grab the mask, I started crying. Yeah, well, oh, God. See, that doesn't surprise me, but that, I think, was the best and only redeemable part. Uh, actually, it didn't even redeem it, but that was the only good part of the movie for a couple reasons, too. Now, a lot of people have been saying Freddy versus Jason for how long? A long time, you know, even like before the movie it started. Yeah, exactly. So when this when this came along, and you, you know who it is, who has his hand in the glove? 
Yeah. yeah. What a dope. Like, Kane Hodder's so, I played Freddy too once. <laughs> you were a hand. Get over yourself. Yeah, but, <laughs> but see, the thing is with that, though, it did, it did give, give the series a, a, almost a, a resurgence in that sense to where, okay, well, this is the final Friday. Well, now all bets are off. Now it's going to be him and, and Freddy in hell or, you know, who, wherever they could go. Obviously, we found out where it went, and I thought it was a great way to, to kind of go from that. Right. So that's all I can say about it, though. That's about it, folks. <laughs> okay. I would just like to mention that uh, in the Crystal Lake Memories, they mentioned what a disaster Ad Del Marcus made of the movie, not knowing how to direct and all that stuff, and Cunningham had to come in and uh, direct some scenes. It was uh, basically, Cunningham said that it was very hard to edit into a watchable movie because over an hour was removed from the original print that Marcus shot. And really? Cun yeah, Cunningham had to go and shoot extra scenes to fill the voids. I believe it. So that just tells you even more. I just want to, in case you think that him being a total incompetent asswipe is just my opinion. Oh yeah. Also, just so you know, the original script of Jason Goes to Hell started off with like flashbacks, and one of them was Jason and his mom having sex. What? And, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, but see, Adam Marcus did not write Jason Goes to Hell. That was Dean Lorray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh. Let's. Uh, this doesn't deserve any, but the uh, awards kills. Debbie. What the F moments. We already did it. We You're just so talked about it. <laughs> Mysteries. Why the movie was made. <laughs> Person to play Jason. Uh, Kane Hodder. We already... Kane Hodder. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Favorite quotes from the movie. What was the last r words in this movie? Uh, I don't uh, remember. Whatever it was, that was my favorite quote in the movie. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Hi. This is Alex Edwards host of The Skeleton Crew, and I would like to formally apologize for this episode. I just can't give my all in something I don't believe in. To make it up to you, I decided to record a verse of a rap song I wrote for Friday the 13th. Hopefully, you will enjoy this verse, hear our ratings for this movie, and look forward to the next episode when we put the full amount of effort in like we always do. Thank you for your patience and understanding. As the story goes, one day in 1957, Jason drowns in the lake at the young age of 11. The counselors ain't hear nothing, they were too busy fucking. He gasped for his last breath, trying to reach for something. That was all they saw, this kid was reported drowned. They searched Crystal Lake, but his body was never found. Mommy broke down and cried, her only son died. Why little Jason, that's all she had in her life. But Mommy just snapped, she said, I'm getting him back. Time heals all wounds, but she never could adapt to the fact that baby boy is never coming back. Those two responsible assholes had better watch the back, but they didn't the dare. The bodies are laying in the mud I'd like to welcome you all to Camp Blood It's only time they find out what it's all about Now it's time, it's lights out And no one's getting out, bitch Okay, are we done? <laughs> yep We're well, gonna rate it, you didn't rate it Oh, uh, one One Nine Oh my, wait, oh, oh my god I gotta go, guys Exactly, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm crazy for liking Jason Takes Manhattan yeah, yep. yeah, you're a fucking nutcase, Alex. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope you enjoyed this. I sure as shit didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I uh, can't wait for Jason X, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Jason X ha actually has plenty of redeeming qualities, and that will be a much more interesting show, and we're sorry. Hey, listen, think of this as like a little break between shows. Right. Yeah. So, there you and go. And I think a lot of people will be surprised at our reactions to the next three movies. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Who knows where it'll go. So, we'll teaser. this is the Skeleton Crew, and this was Jason Goes to Hell, and this was the ninth installment of the 12 Days of Friday the 13th, exclusively at Harbin, and we'll see you tomorrow for Jason X. every movie and for some right. stupid reason I said that's a great idea it is <laughs> um, you know s since this is not technically a Friday 13th is this episode necessary uh, yeah it is
because it is a Friday the 13th. It's called Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. So Friday is in the title. I think it's necessary. I think we, we owe it a little something, but uh, that's about it. Just a little. Just a nod. Mm-hmm. Well, I, just yeah, wanna... I don't know now why you guys hate this, because I oh, like it. God. I just want to let everyone know, if you look down to the bottom right of your screen and you see that yeah. the video is 10 minutes or less, do not be surprised. Yeah, exactly. Because I would never... Whose idea was it to uh, start our return on Harvard with a Friday 13th special in which we give an in-depth look at each Friday 13th movie? I never said in-depth look. I just said a look into, didn't I? Or did I ever? Did I say in-depth? I don't remember. You said that we should do a special where we, we, we do a real breakdown of... Hey, welcome to Rabbit and Blue Radio with the Skeleton Crew. This is the 12 days of Friday to the 13th. I'm your host, Alex, joined as always by Michael J. and our special guest host, Dan Chase. 